Okay, so I want to make a quick video comparing various uh, approaches to digitizing dentures. Uh, so we talk about that uh, for various reasons. If you really just want to duplicate a denture, if you want to use it as a custom impression tray and uh, essentially built-in wax rim for just replacing the denture, uh, or if you want to use it for uh, implant um, cases, there's lots of reasons where you might want to duplicate a denture. And so this talks about the ways to do it digitally as opposed to the traditional method of using a clamshell type technique uh, with, we'll say, um, in some impression material, alginate or whatnot. So uh, in this case, I have three dentures here. You can see the different colors. We've got a pink one, which was done with the um, uh, Shining 3D DSEX um, uh, uh, desktop scanner. Now, if you notice uh, over here on the surfaces, I have it listed as DS to begin with, again, DSEX. DS actually stands for desktop scanner in my nomenclature here. The next one would be the iOS intraoral scanner of the CareStream CS3600. And then last would be a CBCT, which is the blue one. Sorry, the CS is the kind of teal one. This blue one is my XG3D comb beam uh, where I scanned it and then converted it to an STL file or a more of a model as opposed to a, uh, a, a radiographic image that a DICOM is. So anyway, um, so these are the three of them. I've overlaid them. Um, I didn't spend much time making them perfect. I think it's close enough. Uh, you can see that they all are pretty darn uh, consistent with each other. Um, and certainly for the purposes we need to use something like this, it works quite well. Um, so uh, what I want to talk about is the differences in the different techniques. Now, I'd have to make a video showing you each one of the techniques. I, didn't have, I don't have time to do that right now, but I'll kind of describe the process. So first of all, with the DSEX, let's turn off the other one. Let's kind of see what it looks like. So it's a very, you can see the, the gingival margins very cleanly. Everything, it's a very smooth model, okay? One of the things, though, that is the, probably the biggest disappointment is that you have to, um, uh, when you bring it in, first of all, it's an open model. Now, actually, we'll talk about that in a minute, but it's anytime you take an optical scan, you end up with an open, hollowed-out model. So if you use this method, you will have to uh, repair the model to fill those holes so that it is in what we could say watertight. Um, that's for printing purposes. But the, actually, the real challenge, though, that I encounter is that, in fact, you see what's sticking up here is actually um, a bit of uh, poster putty. Uh, you can use triad, various other things, uh, so that when you scan your the denture, you have to have it hold still some way and upright. So if you imagine, I put it on a plate where it was setting up like this on these two little dollops of poster putty so that the camera could take a picture, the whole thing would rotate on its own, it uses a little computer, and then it takes another picture, it takes another picture, it takes another picture, another picture. But something has to be has to it has to be embedded into something. So you end up with these little holes back here or these little globs that you have to trim off later. Not a big deal, but that is probably the one downside to it, or the biggest downside. So it is a little bit uh, annoying not having a sm true distal extension. I actually trimmed it right off in the software because it was just a big glob right here. So um, that is uh, the the software is very intuitive. It does it for you. So you get a great scan because you don't have to really think about it. It just fills it in. Um, I will say that when using this particular scanner, it didn't get everything. So I did have to go back and, t and add some extra images to help it really capture the uh, intaglio of the denture. So that so that is that one. The next one we're going to talk about is the CareStream 3600, CS3600. Again, you're going to see that it's very similar in the uh, margin adaptation. I mean, to me, no discernible difference. Um, it, they both came out great. Uh, one thing I did notice, and I don't know that you can truly see it here. Here we go. There are some openings, again, you see right here. It is not a truly sealed model, so you have to repair that. Much smaller repair, but it is, um, it is an opening. Uh, that is actually a repair that may be perfectly functional within the software here. I haven't tried, um, uh, but uh, well, actually I'll go ahead and try it right here. Let's see if it repaired it. That's actually not the one I wanted to repair. It would be this one right here. Let's try and repair this. I'm going to turn this one off. Let's zoom in right here. Let's see if this gets filled when we use the uh, built-in repair function. We have the model selected. 
and it didn't. So you'd have to open this up in uh, Mesh Mixer to ensure you repaired it, or you could try just bringing it into your printing software to see if it would uh, auto repair. So simple error. This one fixes very easily. Um, uh, and or if I spend a little more time scanning it, and perhaps I could avoid that to begin with. But uh, I will say that the scanning process takes is a little more tedious because you have to hold it in your hand. You have to scan it, move it, scan it, move it, scan it. So you are more hands-on than you are with the uh, desktop scanner. But the uh, you don't end up with these cl uh, clipped-off extensions. You have the full denture, and it works pretty well actually. Um, so uh, I, I was pretty pleased with it. Again, a little tedious having to move your hand around and to get it, but uh, in the end, it gave me a pretty darn good result. And so the last one I'm going to show you is simply taking the, the denture and setting it in your comb beam and hitting go. Um, no hand holding, no, um, you don't have to add images, you just scan it, bring it into the Blue Sky Plan software, go to import diecoms, and just call it a model. The software will allow you to bring it as a CT scan and convert it into a physical model that can be printed. Now you can tell you lose a lot of the detail on the margins, um, and so there is some work involved in doing this. It's not going to be the kind of denture that if you had a you know a denture resin that you could print it and have a beautiful resin beautiful denture, but for implant things, uh, taking an impression with this would be perfectly fine. Um, it, it works really well. You will notice though that if you've had to reline or add acrylic at times, the varying densities will leave these little areas. So if I show you what the denture actually looks like, it's not, it doesn't look like that. Um, so there isn't that roughness that we see here, um, or depression, that's because the um, software sensed the different density of acrylics and some of it didn't get it uh, did not get picked up and others did. So that is one of the problems there. Also if you do t look at the 3D, um, uh, if you do look at like a, a slicer view of this, let's take a look, let's go to perspectives, let's go to the NPR view, um, you'll notice as I walk through this, let's turn on the outline, you'll see little holes that can, uh, that can pop up. See a hole in the tooth, various holes, so there's, there's porosity that'll occur. Now, not a big deal, but as it prints, it's actually going to be hollow in those areas. So, is that a big deal? Probably not, but um, it is something to consider. Um, so yeah, so, so now let's go back and let's look at this again. Um, let's just zoom in on this view. So, what's my verdict? I'm going to tell you that I think that the simplest thing is still this step because it's um, you can simply set it on the comb beam, press go, and if you're using it for an implant uh, case, well, you're going to be open up the software to convert it into a DICOM anyways, uh, from a DICOM to a, a STL, so I think it makes the most sense. It's probably the easiest. You're going to comb beam the patient anyways for the implants, might as well just comb beam their denture. And plus, if you're using it as a scan appliance and you're adding radiographic beads, you're going to have to do this anyways. So in that case, I think this is the most seamless uh, approach. If you are, however, trying to get a really nice duplicate denture where you might even print it as or have it milled uh, out of PMMA or whatnot, and you want to actually use this as a duplicate, even if it's just for a temporary, I think your best bet is actually going to be the uh, CareStream. Uh, I felt that although it took maybe a little more time hand holding it as you scan it, the end result um, was better than the desktop scanner. Um, fewer things to repair, and overall, it really, I think with a little practice, it would probably be just as quick as doing with the desktop scanner. Um, so I think that wins. Now, the, the desktop scanner is the most affordable of all of them, because the desktop scanner is a $5,000 desktop scanner. You've got a $30,000 intraoral scanner, or a whatever, you know, 60 to 100, 100 plus thousand dollar comb beam. So if you don't have any of these devices and you're going to buy one, and you know, I'm not going to say you're going to buy it s solely for this purpose, but of course, point of entry, it goes um, probably the opposite direction. So anyway, thought I'd give you thought that that video might help. I'm trying to think if there's any other tidbits I should point out about this. Um, can't think of any right now. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, and of course, if you uh, want to see any more my other videos as I uh, release them, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way, you'll be the first to be notified of any new videos. All right, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions.